Now that we've sent our scanned image to our iPad, um, it should show up within your images file. So if you go to your photos, um, anything that was scanned and sent will show up here. And these are my most recent scans that I sent over through AirDrop. So what we're gonna do now is clean them up. So the easiest way to do this is to open it up in Affinity Photo. So I'm gonna select Affinity Photo and launch it. And then while we're here, um, you may see your gallery. If you've never used Affinity Photo in the past, you might not have anything here. I use this a lot for courses and for uh, freelance work as well as my own surface pattern design work. So what I'm gonna do is go to this upper right-hand corner and I'm going to select the little plus icon. Once I've done that, this new gallery kind of pulls up and what I wanna select is open from photos or import from photos. Open import from photos. It's gonna give me all of these options. I'm gonna select recents and I'm gonna select from the actual files that I set myself that I scanned in. So I'm gonna select um, this bunch of floor, uh, the bunch of flowers that I created and it'll show up on my screen like this. And what we're gonna do is basically remove this white background so that we can just isolate the floral themselves. It's actually a lot simpler than it would seem. Um, and part of the reason why we wanted to make sure we use the non-textured um, white paper is gonna make a huge difference and you'll see why in a moment. So in Affinity Photo, before we remove the background we need to prep this image so that it's easier to remove that white background and what we're going to do is play around with the contrast by working with adjusting our levels so on the right hand side in our studio menu here the fourth option down um, on the right hand side is our adjustments studio so what we'll want to do is go to levels and select it and then you'll get this little pop-up at the bottom. When we're here, what we wanna do is bump up our black and bring down the white so that it kinda creates this really nice contrast between what is color on the screen and what is not. So I'm gonna go to this black option here, click on it and you can either click on it and enter something manually or you can just click on it and you can drag your stylus right or left and you can see already that it starts to increase the overall saturation of the colored portion of the artwork. So I'm just gonna increase this just a bit. Um, I think 10 will work for me. And then I'm gonna go down to the white option and I'm gonna click on it and I'm just gonna bring it down by dragging left just a bit. And then I'm gonna go back to black again and just kind of Bump that up a little bit more so that these little like splatters that I have that, that might be kind of hard to see on screen um, are easier to see um, in the overall color. Once I'm done with that, I can just tap into my screen, select any of my other tools, and then I can click on adjustments and it'll pull it back in. And what you might want to do, depending on what this does, once you've um, played around with the contrast, if you notice that it's taking away a lot of like your texture, which I don't think it's doing that um, to mine, um, but what you could do is go back into your adjustments again and go back into your levels and you can adjust your gamma. You can just kind of drag it left or right to kind of increase or decrease the overall um, texture that you're getting within this art here. Once you're done with that, you can just click on your adjustments so it'll pull it back in. Um, and then we can just select our arrow tool in the upper left hand corner. And now what we can do is go and actually um, apply a filter that will remove this white background um, very easily. Now that we're done with editing the image so that we've bumped up the contrast, what we wanna do is go into our layer studio, then we're gonna select it. The icon looks like a, a set of stacked papers, so we're gonna click on that. And then what we wanna do is select both our image as well as that adjustment. So we're gonna click on the adjustment and then we're gonna drag right on our image and it's gonna select both and you'll know they're both selected because they're kind of highlighted in gray. Then what we wanna do is group them. So we'll select this little icon that looks like a puzzle piece and it's gonna group these together. 
And then what we'll do is go into our filters menu and what we wanna do is scroll all the way down until we find the filter that says erase white paper. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna give you a little pop-up that that image was rasterized and that's fine. We want that because it's gonna basically flatten that adjustment layer and your image layer. And then what you'll see is if you zoom in really closely, it's removed this white background. I'm gonna do a little drop in with a screen recording of my screen here just so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. Once you zoom in, you'll see that the background has been deleted and all that's left is a gray and white grid. Um, what we'll wanna do though, before we're done, is basically this will leave you with a really nice image, but I always suggest double checking um, to look for any kind of stray marks or any gray marks that aren't needed. So what I do is I'm just gonna go into that pixel layer, just making sure it's selected. And then I'm just gonna zoom in and with my eraser tool, which is on the left-hand side, my erase brush tool, I'll go in and I'll zoom in and I'll just double check to see if there's any stray marks that I don't wanna have. And there, overall, this has been really nice, um, but there are still a few little like bits that you might wanna clean up. And what's nice is that with the Apple Pencil, I feel like it makes things a lot more, not convenient, but it makes things a, a lot easier when you're going in and cleaning up these little stray marks just because it's, it's, I feel like it's easier than using a mouse. So it gives me a lot more control over, over what I'm cleaning up and where. And then you can adjust the width of your brush by going into this pop-up menu at the bottom and where the width is, you can just click on it and drag left to decrease or drag right to increase. And I just make it a little bit smaller for anything that's really close up that I need to get right next to the painting width. And then I also like to just increase my brush and just do the edges just in case. And that is it. Now our background is clean. We've isolated our image from that white background and I'm just gonna add a, a layer here just to kind of um, showcase what it'll look like with a different color behind it. So I'm gonna go into my layers and I'm gonna select plus and I'm gonna select a pixel layer. And then I'm just gonna go to my rectangle tool here on the left hand side. I'm gonna go into my color studio on the right hand side pick a new color, and then I'm gonna make a shape behind this. And if your rectangle's in front, no worries, just click on the rectangle, drag it, and you'll see now that your image has been isolated from your paper. You can see now that the white background has been removed, all stray marks have been cleaned up, and you just have the painted portion. And now what we can do is um, basically use this to create a repeating pattern.